Hey everyone, in this video, I want to show you how to do full text searches in a Postgres database through Django. So normally when you're querying in Django and you want to search for something, you can only do like exact matches through contains and I contains, but that's not very powerful enough. If you wanna have a search that's similar to like a search engine, then you wanna use full text search in Postgres. So of course you'll need a Postgres database, but once you have it, you can set up Django so you can perform these searches and get the relevant results. So I have a Django app running right now and I have a bunch of videos from my YouTube channel in the database. So it's basically the title and the description of the video. And what I want to do is I want to search those titles and descriptions and return the most relevant results. And I'll show you how to build this example in this video, but here it is. So if I want to search for Flask, I search, I get 17 results and we see I have the videos that have Flask. And also I have a little preview of the description where it has Flask bolded so you can see uh, what the description has. If I search for like Python instead, I get 11 results. And if I search for async, I get six results. So this isn't just a match. It's actually looking at the title and the description and is ranking them by relevance and it's returning them in a particular order. And I'll show you how to do all this in the video. And I think it's really powerful if you're doing something that needs to support search. So if you have like a blog or just anything that allows the users to search for something, I think this will work pretty well for you. So let's get started building this. To start with this, we need to have a Postgres database that we have access to. So I'm using this service called Elephant SQL, and it allows you to create a Postgres database for free. So once you create yours and go to your actual database instance, you'll get to a page that looks like this. So I'll put a link to this in the description below. If you don't have the ability to create a Postgres database somewhere else, you can use this service. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the credentials that I have and I'm going to put them in my settings for my app so I can use the Postgres database instead of the default SQLite database, which of course won't work with full text search. So I'll start by just copying the URL. So I'll show it and I'll just copy it here and I'll add it to my Django project, which I've already created. And this is basically the very beginning after start project. The only thing I did was I added another app called example, which we'll be using for this. And I also added a command in that example, which I'll show you in a moment. But what I wanna do is I wanna go down to the database settings and just modify these to use Postgres instead of SQLite. So to do that, I'm going to change the backend from SQLite to PostgreSQL. To get the other information, I'll paste in that URL that I just copied, so there. And it has the name of the database, the password, the server host, and the name again. Uh, the name of the database and the username happens to be the same. So the name of the database is this here. So I'll just replace this db.sqlite and I'll remove the base directory. Uh, the user is going to be the same thing. So that's... And then I have the password. So the password is going to be this here after the colon and before the at. And finally, the host is going to be this john.db.elephantsql.com. And I'll put that there. And then the rest of the stuff I don't need or I already used it. So I'll just do that. So now I have my database configured. Another thing that I'll do is I'll go up to the installed apps and I'll just add django.contrib.postgres so I can use the extra features that you can use with a Postgres database instead of the default SQLite database. So now that I have that, let me go ahead and migrate everything. So python manage.py migrate. And I see that I have this error here, no module name, psycho pg2, so I can just install that. So pip install. Psycho PG2 should be pretty easy. And if you can't install Psycho PG2, uh, just like I can't, then you can try installing the binary instead. You can do pip install psycopg 2 binary. Let's see if that works, and it does. So now I can try migrating again. And it looks like all my migrations are working, so just waiting a moment for them to complete. And then once that completes, I'm going to go ahead and create a super user so I can use the admin dashboard. So Python manage.py create super user. And then I'll just add in the information that they want. 
and then create a password. Bypass the validation. Okay, so the reason why I did that is because I want to use the admin dashboard. So let me just go ahead and load that up. So python manage.py uh, run server. And I'll just open that in my browser and go to admin and just log in in preparation for what I'm going to do later. So now that I have the admin dashboard set up and the database and everything set up, I wanna create my first model. So I'll go to my app example and I'll go to the models.py here and I'm going to create a model. So this model is going to hold YouTube video information. So the three things that I'm concerned with are the video ID, the title for the video and the description. So to do that, I'll just create a class and I'll call it video and it's going to inherit from models.model. And like I said, I'll have three fields. So a YouTube ID, which will be a character field. And let's make this a max length of 20. I don't know the actual max length of a YouTube video ID. It might be something like 10. And then I'll create a title one and the max length for this one will be 200, let's say. And then finally, I'll have the description for the particular video. And this will be a models dot uh, text field, right? Because it can be a lot longer than 200 characters. And then I'll put a dunder stir here just so I can see it a little easier in the admin dashboard when I go to that. So I'll just return self.title. Next, what I'll do is I'll add this to admin so I can view it. So admin.site.register video. And of course, I'll need to import that. So from uh, dot models import video, right? So that should work. Let me confirm by going back to my admin dashboard. And yeah, we see videos here. Oh, there's actually one more thing I need to do. I need to make migrations and then migrate. So I just made the migrations and then I'll migrate. And then I'll run the server again. And now I should be able to see the videos. Okay, so to actually get the video data, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a script that I created to load the videos in for my YouTube channel, the most recent 50 videos. So the way that works is I'll go to management and the commands and I have this command called load videos. And basically what I'm doing is I'm using the YouTube API to get all the uploaded videos to my channel, or at least the most recent videos, the last 50 of them. So the way this works is I'm taking in a channel ID and my key, which I'll put in in a moment. I'm getting the playlist ID for my uploads from my channel. And then I'm querying against that playlist ID to get all those videos. And then finally down here, once I actually have the videos, I'm just adding them to the database by creating the video here and then saving it. So let me put in my key. And then I'm going to run this script so we can have the 50 videos and you'll be able to see them on the admin dashboard. And of course, this code is going to be available in the description below. So if you wanna run this script yourself, you can. You just need to put in a channel ID. You can use mine or you can use a different one. And then you'll have to sign up for the YouTube API so you can have an API key to use this. So let me go ahead and run the command. So python manage.py load videos. And it should be pretty quick. Okay, it's done. So let me go back to the admin dashboard. So I'll start my server again. I'll go to the admin dashboard and refresh. And now I see a bunch of videos in here. So if I just click on one, for example, intro to flask caching, I see a YouTube ID, I see a title, and then I see a description. So this is exactly what I want. And of course, the reason why I'm doing all this is because the full text search is going to search both the title in the description when it's working correctly. So I have the test data that I'm going to be working with. Now let's move on to the part where we can actually search this. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a simple view and URL and template so I can do all this. So I'll go over to uh, my views.py file and I'll create that. So we'll just put it on the index. So index request, and I'm going to create a context dictionary and then I'm going to return uh, render request the template and I'll just call this index.html which I'll create in a moment and I'll pass the context to it. 
I'll also create the URL for this. Let me go to urls.py and I'll just import it into the main urls.py just to keep things simple. So from example.urls or actually example dot, well, how about example import views? I think that's the easiest way to do it. And then for the path, I'll just put this on the index and we'll have views.index and then I'll have the name index as well. I don't think I'll use it, but I'll just put it there. And then finally, I'll create a simple template. So I'll go to my example, create a templates directory, and then inside of here, I'll create index.html. Our template is going to be pretty simple. So I'll use Emmet to create like the scaffolding. And then inside the template, what I want to have is I want a simple form. And I'm going to have a single input in that form that's type text, and then name will just say Q for query. And then it's going to have a button and the text will be search, right? So let's see, I can close out the URLs. Uh, the views.py looks okay. So let me just make sure this is working. So I'll go back here and I'll just create a new window for this and I'll go to the index. And we see the template doesn't exist and it should. I'm not sure if the name is too generic. So what I'll do is I'll put uh, example here and then I'll move the template file into the example directory and then I'll change it to example slash index.html here. So let's try that. And it works. Now that I have this, I want to bring in a simple query just so we can see the results. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have a query on my video model. So I'll say something like videos equals video dot objects and let's just do dot all just so I can see them all and I need to import uh, my video so from models import uh, video right and then I'll just pass this to the template so uh, videos videos and then what I'll do is I'll go to my template and I'll just add this under the form so these are going to be our results so right now it returns everything but in a moment I'll actually search. So for video in videos, I'm going to uh, in the for loop here. And what I want to do inside of here is I want to just display a link to the video, the title of the video, and then eventually I'll have the description, but uh, not at the moment. So I'll just do the title and the link. So I'll put a link here. Um, it's going to be an href and this is going to be YouTube. So I think it's HTTPS uh, YouTube.com slash watch and then question mark. And I think V. Yeah, it should be V. And I'm going to pass in the YouTube ID for the video. So video YouTube ID. And I'll close that out. And inside, I'll just put H1 tags with the title of the video. So video dot title. Right. So now we should be able to see this. Okay, so these are the 50 videos. And like I said, I'm not searching yet. I'm just displaying the videos. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify that query to support search. So first, what I want to do is I want to be able to insert a value here and search for it. So if I said something like Django, I want to be able to search for that. So if I hit search, I see it goes into the query parameter. So if I go back to my code and go to my views, I'll be able to use that. So what I want to do is I'll say something like uh, Q equals requests dot get dot get Q. And then I'll say if Q, I'll do something and then uh, else I'll just say videos equals none, right? So I'll put this query inside of here. And I'll modify this to use a filter that allows me to search. So the most basic search that I can have, the, build, the most basic full text search, I can do filter. And then for the filter, I'll use the field that I'm interested in, so title. And then it's underscore, underscore, so dunder, and search. So this search only works with Postgres. So make sure you're using Postgres and not something like SQLite. Something like this seems simple enough. It seems like it's like the built-in Django query system, but it isn't. It's actually an extension of the Postgres part. So if you try this with like SQLite, it won't work. 
And then in here, what I can do is I can put in the query, so Q, right? So that simple change will allow me to search using Q as the thing that I'm searching with. So if I go here and I type Django again and hit search, now I get fewer results. So fewer results here, we see the first one is the select related and prefetch related. If I change this to Flask, for example, I now see completely different results. And you see they have Flask in the name. If I change it to Python, let's see if I have any videos, yes. So I have Python and I'm getting the results for that. So this is already a good start, but this can be done using the built-in query system for Django. You don't have to use any Postgres features for this because I'm just matching one word. But what if I want to match two? So let's say uh, Python async, right? Let's see what happens. Now I get two results. I see async Python and I see async function and Python here. So you see that they're not together. Um, and I search for Python async, but this one is the other way around, async Python, and it still returns because it's doing a full text search. So if I did something like contains or I contains, I wouldn't be able to get the res these results because they don't go together in the order that I uh, query them. But with full text search, it kind of breaks them up and it's able to determine that you want to look for both of those keywords in the title and they don't have to appear next to each other. So that is the most basic way of searching. And if that's what you need, then that is going to work great for you. However, you can do a lot more than just that. So what I want to do is I want to import some things. So I'll say uh, from django.contrib.postgres.search, I'm going to import something called search query. And I'm also going to import search vector. So the search query and the search vector are what we use to perform these full text searches in Postgres. And a query is obviously the thing that you're searching for. So it's the text and it's converted into a format that's easy to compare to what is the vector. So the vector is the data that you're searching, but this data has been converted to a form that is easy to search. So both the query and the vector are something that's converted just to make things easier to search because it's not like a true contained search where you're just taking the raw text and looking for that text inside of the data that you're searching. Instead, you convert the query to something, you convert the data to something, a vector, and then you compare those things. And then after they're compared, it returns like the original data that has been searched. That way you can do a lot more things. Like for example, you can search uh, plurals without having to specify them directly. So if I say something like Python and Pythons, uh, those will be the same search because they're basically the same thing. Also, it removes things like a, the, and words like that because they're not really important for most searches um, in the data that is. So these converted data are used for the search. And to do that, what I'll do inside of this if statement is I'll create both the vector and the query. So the vector is going to be the search vector. And what I pass to the search vector is the field or fields that I want to search across. So in this case, I'm searching on the title. And then I can create a query. And this will be the search query. And this one takes in the actual value that the user typed in or whatever you're searching for. So Q. And then to modify this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this filter. So let me just comment that out and I'll just do another one. So videos equals video dot objects. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to annotate and I'll create a pseudo column called search. And this is going to be uh, the vector, right? So I'm searching across this vector. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter on that search by the query. Right, so this new updated query is the same as the original one. So title under search is the same as this. Obviously this is longer and more complicated, but it's more powerful and I'll show you that in a moment. But just to show you that it still works, I'll go to the page and I'll search for, let's say Django again, and it returns the Django results. So that's pretty simple, but what if I want to search across multiple columns? I can do that by just modifying the search vector. So in addition to searching across title, I can search for 
or search in the description. So let's see if that changes the results any. So I'll go back to my search and I'll search for Jenga. And here I still get the same results because I'm pretty sure in my description, I also write Django. So it's not really that big of a difference. But one thing I know that I have in all my descriptions is web development because I'm giving a link to my web development courses. So I'll just search for web development and let's see if that returns anything. And it does. So we see I have a bunch of results here and I think it's all of them. But the thing is, I don't see web development in the title anywhere. And the reason why I don't see it in the title is because it's not there, but it's in the description and it still returns results. So let me just go back and remove the description really quick and just do that same search again and we'll see that it doesn't work. So web development, search, and I get no results. So we know that it's searching on the description for sure. So one thing I want to add just to make this a little more clear is I want to add like the number of videos. So I'll put an if statement here. So if videos, I just want to put like the length of videos. Um, let's see, I can say um, results and then videos length, right? And I just have to end the if statement down here. Okay, so if I do this again and search for web development, I see 50 results. Okay, so it returns all of them. So now that I can do simple matching, I wanna do something a little more complicated. I want to rank the results that I'm getting. So like a search engine, I wanna return the ones that are the most relevant. So to do that, I'm going to import something called search rank from the same place, uh, contrib postgres search. And what I can do with this is I can create another query. So I'll just comment that one out. So videos equal video dot objects. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to annotate this with a rank. And this rank is going to be the search rank and the search rank takes in both a vector and a query. So vector first and then the query, which I still have up here. And this rank is going to be a number. And what I want to do is I want to order by that rank descending, right? So now let's try a query and see what happens. If I go over here and I search for Django, I get 50 results. So we see Django results at the top, but if I go down to the bottom, I see like fast API, I see some flask stuff. So why do I see that? Well, it's because it's going through every single row in the table and it's assigning a rank to it. So the ones at the top have the highest rank and the ones at the bottom have the lowest rank. So what I'll do is I'll display the rank so we can see it more clearly. So I'll go here inside of the loop and I'll just put the rank. So video.rank and now let me search again for Django. So now under the rank, we see a number. So this is 0 0.09 and then some things after 0 0.08, 0 0.08. And as I go down, this number gets smaller and smaller. And we see if it has the word Django in it, then it has some number above zero. And if it doesn't have the word Django in it, then it just ends up at zero. And it just gives you like a random sort for these. So all the ones with zero have nothing to do with Django. All the ones that have more than zero, then it has something to do with Django. And it's determining that this deploy a Django app to Heroku is the one that has the most relevance. So if I just open this and if I go to the description, let's see what I have. I see the word Django. I see Django again, Django. So I see Django three times, four times. So that's probably why it's the most relevant because I have the word Django in there so many times. So normally you wouldn't want the results that aren't relevant. So what I can do is I can go back to the code and I can put a filter. So filter, and in the filter I can say the rank is greater than or equal to zero. And really I want like 0 0.001 because sometimes it comes up like with a really, really small number that's not zero. So I'll just do something greater than 0 0.001. And then if I go back and perform that same query again, we see I get 17 results instead of all 50. So now this returns the results still ranked by relevance, 
but it removes the ones that have nothing to do with Django at all, the ones that have zero for the rank. So it just has 17 results. If I search for Flask, then it returns 17 results again. That's quite the coincidence. Let me search for Python. Python has 11 results and we see only things that have to do with Python are displayed here. Like I see something down here with fast API, but I'm pretty sure somewhere in the description, I wrote something about Python. So the last thing I want to do is I want to display like a little preview of the description text, kind of like Google does when you search for something. So to do that, I'm going to use something called the search headline. So I can import this from the same place. So search headline. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create that headline. So just under the vector in the query, I'll, I'll call this search headline. And I'm going to take that search headline class that I imported. And you specify a field that you have the headline on, which is the field that you want to preview. So description. And then you also provide a query. So the query is going to be uh, the thing that appears in bold, right? There are also some other options for this, like the the start selector or the start element and the end element. This allows you to modify the HTML that is generated. Uh, by default, it returns bold tags. So I'm going to just pass this to the template and it's going to bold anything that's there because search headline, uh, when it's in the query, returns HTML. So what I can do now is I'll just comment out this query and I'll copy it and I'm going to extend it by adding that headline. So after this rank annotate, what I'll do is I'll add another annotate for the headline. So I'll do headline equals search headline, just like that. And that's the only change I need to make. And then inside the template, what I can do is I can add the headline here. So I can do video dot headline, and this needs to be safe because this headline is going to be HTML. And now let's see what happens when I do this. So I'll search for Django again. And this time we see the, the text here. Uh, I see Django bolded twice. And then of course I can see it for the other ones. And if I scroll down, I see it for all of them. If I search for Flask, it's going to do the same thing. And it basically works in the same way. This last one here doesn't have Flask in the description, so I can't bold anything, but it does have it in the title, so that's why it appears. It's the least relevant, but it's still relevant a little bit, so it returns there in the results. So that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Let me just make this a new line, just so the rank appears better. But yeah, that's all I want to show you in this video. Of course, there are many other features and configuration things that you can change about this. So if you want to modify your search in a particular way, you can do that. But I just showed you the, the main way of doing it, which will work for a lot of people. So if you want to learn more about how this works, I have links in the description below for the documentation on both Django and Postgres. Uh, also, if you want to download the code for this, I have a link in the description below for that as well. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.